I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the Department Drawing and Painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Module 34. I am going to speak on the history of Chinese painting with a chapter on 18th century individualists, the Yang Chao eccentrics and others. The tradition of lyrical self-expression established by the individualists of the 17th century continued to flourish during the 18th century. Though there were no painters quiet of the quality of Qi or Shi Tao, but many minor masters produced scrolls and album leaves of great freshness and originality. Kao Chi Pi, Kao Feng Han, Chin Nang and Lo Ping were the 18th century individualists. Sometime in the late 17th century or early 18th century, Wang Yuan Chi wrote in painting of later Ming period, There were mannerist tendencies and degenerate movements to which the Qi school was the worst of all. The corrupt practices of Yang Chao and Nanking painters today are quite as bad as were those of the Qi school. And anyone who aims at a mastery of brush and ink must take paints to avoid them. The tradition of lyrical self-expression established by the individualists of the 17th century continued to flourish during the 18th century. There were no painters quite of the quality of Shi Qi or Shi Tao, but many minor masters produced scrolls and album leaves of great freshness and originality. An example of how the new situation affected paintings may be seen in the career of Kao Chi Pi, who was active from 1672 to 1734. native of Manchuria and an accomplished painter from the time he was eight years old. His landscapes in a conservative style were much admired at the imperial court where he had served in a high official where he had served in a high official post under the Emperor Kang Hisi. Besides working in the traditional manner with a brush, However, he developed an elaborate technique of finger painting, not only employing the balls of his fingers and the side of his hand to apply broad shrieks and washes of ink and color, but also growing one finger nail to extra length and splitting it like a pen so that it could be used for drawing lines. Though this method was not entirely new, but still served to give an air of novelty to the picture. And along with Kao's virtuous technique and lively imagination to make them very much in demand. He eventually gave up the brush altogether and his more meticulous style with it to devote all his energies as an artist to the production of finger painting. He is even said to have employed assistants to add colors so as to be able to increase his output. It is not surprising in view of this mass production method that the level of quality in his finger paintings is not uniformly high. Too many of them seem more vigorous than refined and 
some are unpleasantly coarse. Many, like many other artists in the late period, he is at his best in the album form, where he allows his imagination full freedom in sustaining variety among the motives and compositions of the successive leaves. The album of landscapes in the Museum of Asiatic Art amongst them is among the finest, containing a number of striking and original pages. The painting, Landscape with Tall Peaks, is an album leaf, ink and light colors on paper. Presents a sinister vista of needle peaks and sickly trees seen through the smoky atmosphere of sunset. At the foot of the tallest peak, in what should perhaps be understood as a valley, is a single house. For long looking in this scarcely habitable place. The effects of the finger painting technique are evident in the scratchy line. A fingernail, however, skillfully used, cannot produce so firm and continuous a line as a brush can. And in the overlaid streaks of wash, Chinese writers remark that some influence of the Qi school lingers in the work of Kao Chi Pi. His another hanging scroll titled Hermit by Kao Chi Pi is painted in ink on paper and at present in the collection of Oriental Museum Budapest. Hangu Pass by Kao Chi Pi is an album leaf dated to first half of 18th century. It is ink and colors on paper and at present in the collection of Museum of Asian Art Amsterdam. Kao's picture makes one clear that finger painting introduced a high degree of abstraction and that the fingernail could be used for the most varied stroke in the wet and dry ink. With unorthodoxy now so generally accepted, independent inclined artists had little fear or hope of shocking their contemporaries. Kao Chi Pi as a part-time, somewhat commercialized, eccentric, appears in many of his works to have been trying his best to startle and impress even at the risk of falling into what Chinese term vulgarity. Nevertheless, his brushwork or properly finger work for all its abandon, carries relatively little of true expressionist fervor. Besides landscape, Kao Chi Pi was also noted for flowers, birds, and figure paintings. A more credible eccentric, but another whose vileness often seems forced was Kao Feng Han. Like Kao Chi Pi, he appears in some of his works as a stylistic conservative, but is best known for pictures in a freer and more extemporaneous manner, especially those done after he had lost the use of his right arm through severe rheumatism and had begun to write and paint with his left. 
He is seen at his best in the album in the former Abbey collection, Osaka, from which is reproduced the first leaf. The painting, Peonies and Rocks, dated 1734, is an album leaf, ink and light colors on paper, and in the former Abbey collection, Osaka. It is a swirling composition of swift, fluid lines and clean washes of green and cool colors. The outlines of the peony petals are repeated in contours of the rocks and stamens of the flower in scattered patches of moss. Kao Feng Han gives some suggestion of volume to his rocks with graded wash and then negates it deliberately by writing long inscriptions on the face of one of them. The whole picture seems in the end more a display of calligraphy than a proper picture, but as such it is a brilliant work. Kao is sometimes connected loosely to Yang Chao school and has occasionally even being numbered among the eight eccentrics of Yang Chao. Even though he was neither a native nor a resident of that city. The group known as the eight eccentrics properly includes three who can be recognized as major painters. Chen Nung, Hua Yen and Lo Ping and five of lesser rank all of whom lived in Yang Chao for some portions of their lives. They gathered in the saloons of rich merchants who had made their fortunes in the salt trade or some other variety of commerce and who now competed as patrons of the arts. Providing lavish entertainment for scholars, poets, and painters. The special tone of Yang Chao culture in this period was set by such gatherings at which wealth paid tribute to genius and after genius to a center city. Around the middle of the 18th century, the most prominent among the Yang Chao painters was Chin Ning. He was active from 1687 and after 1764. He having begun to paint only when he was 50, worked in deliberately awkward and amateur fashion. In Chin Nang, it is observed that he guarded his amateurism carefully, allowing no technical refinements to spoil it. He was nonetheless proud of his painting and his admiration for them was shared by his contemporaries. A painting of Chin Nang, a youth gazing across a lotus pond. It is an album leaf, ink and color on paper and at present in the collection of H.C. Wang, New York. This bears a poem in Chin's peculiar square-cut calligraphy, returns to the old theme of man enjoying nature. A youth gazes across a lotus pond from a covered walk, resting one foot on a low stool and leaning on the railing. The figure strikes an ungainly pose, but without revealing in it any very distinct quality of temperament or mood aside from simple relaxation. 
Similarly, the oddness of the composition seems not to result so much from the expressionist distortion as from sheer disregard or conventional canons of arrangement. As in his other works, Chin Nang flattens his forms and composes them on the surface in conformity with a special system of proportions. Needless to say, his own, his distinctive brush line is best seen in the drawings of the figure and in the wavering lines of the architecture. Any suspicion that this unsteadiness in the drawing might be attributable merely to the effects of old age is dispelled by the firmly written inscription above. Throughout the picture and most of all in the lush and colorful setting, the willow and the other trees, the grassy shore, the pond itself, Chin Nang gives the impression of being as aimless and relaxed as a subject and of having nothing more substantial to convey than the warm atmosphere of a summer day. Another painter, Hua Yen, who was active from 1682 to 1765, is noted for brilliant studies of birds, animals and flowers, in which his light abbreviated brushwork omits all but the essentials. Among the Yang Chao masters, he is said to be the most versatile and accomplished. His landscapes received less attention. Today, the best of his landscapes, especially those in the album leaf form, can be admired by small masterpieces of abbreviation. They capture something of the lyrism of Southern Song album leaves, although they are very different in style and reflect a less serious approach both to nature and to the art of painting. Treating familiar themes with a light, sometimes playful touch. It is just this lightness, this hint that the painter himself did not take an entirely serious view of his subject that saves from sentimentality such a picture as the one reproduced here. In one of his album leaf titled An Autumn Scene dated 1720, ink and light color on paper and today in the collection of Freer Gallery of Art, Washington DC. In the picture, the evocation of autumnal feeling is refined to a point just short of preciousness. A strolling scholar pauses to look pensively across the water at a distant peak. A few red leaves drift down from the branches of the tallest tree, delicately enhancing the mild melancholy of the scene. Neither the dry brush liniment, soft but never weak, nor the subtly off-balance composition carries any strong sense of purposeful non-conformism. The intensity conceived and sometimes sober visions of the 17th century individualists have given way to less ambitious creations in a warmer gentler spirit. Hua Yen, who despite his versatility was regarded as one of the conservatives among the eccentrics. His hanging stroll leisure time in the hall on the mountain stream dated to 1743 ink color on paper and at present in the SMBPK 
Berlin Museum. Here, Hua Yen's masterly control of the most varied brush strokes can be recognized clearly in the hanging scroll. He contrasts the towering mountains near and far by means of contours and washes. Subordinated to the powerful landscape and yet in harmony with the environment, through his instrument, the scholar sits in his mountain hermitage. Nevertheless, the characteristic elements of the eccentrics can be recognized abstract calligraphic brush strokes, ink dots and warm colors. By the beginning of the last quarter of the century, all but one of the eight eccentrics was dead. Lo Ping, who was active from 1733 to 1799, remained a solitary survivor of the last major school in Chinese painting. His association with his teacher, Chin Nang, lasted only for seven years due to Chin's death. Lo Ping himself became one of Yang Shao's most popular painters, partly because he was regarded as Chin Nang's artistic heir and partly through a curious caprice of his own. He painted ghosts and claimed that his pictures were based on first-hand observation. But this was another conscious eccentricity. The days when a painter could see ghosts or detect spiritual essences in rocks and trees were long past and it was now difficult to transcend the matter of fact with any real conviction. In the winter of 1798, less than a year before his death, Lo Ping re-encountered briefly an old friend called Ayan, whom he had not seen for nine years and painted for him as a farewell present. It is simultaneously a portrait of his friend and of Tang poet Meng Hao Jan, whose fondness for blossoming plum is recalled in the branch held by the figure. Portrait of the artist friend Ai Jen, dated 1798. It is a section of a hanging scroll, ink and light colors on paper and at present in private collection, Washington, D.C. Here, the old man stands beside a fantastically hollowed rock, his head slightly bent, inhaling the fragrance of the blossoms with conscious aestheticism. Here, Lo Ping draws in a style derived largely from that of Chen Hong Shao, who had himself formed his figure style through half serious play upon archaic manner. His other painting, Buddhist Monk Under a Hollow Tree, it is a hanging scroll of 18th century. And it is in the Collogue Museum of Far Eastern Art, is also a worth appreciating hanging scroll. During the 18th century, the cultural and social life of Yang Chao, which had grown wealthy on the salt trade, attracted countless artists. It offered not only beautiful garden and landscapes, winter houses, inns, brothels, and pleasure boats, 
but also all important patronage. Many wealthy travelers came to the towns and some were keen on buying works of art and the rich merchants who lived there prided themselves on patronizing their painters whether the artists were locals or newcomers. Many wealthy travelers came to towns and some were keen on buying works of arts and the rich merchants who lived there prided themselves on patronizing their painters whether the artists were local or newcomers. As a result of being generally less cultured than other patrons of arts, these new buyers were less firmly tied to the traditional forms that had a very positive effect on painting. Painters could now experiment with new themes and techniques and yet still find enthusiastic customers. The label eight eccentrics of the Yang Shao, they were called outsiders, was coined in the 19th century and encompasses very different artists. Grouping these names together did not mean that the artist followed a common program, either in style or theme. What was new was that the painters were literary, but demanded a change of traditional values. These artists demonstrated their artistic independence and individuality through intense styles of painting that verge on the abstract or the expressionist. Using thin brush strokes paired with extensive washes or calligraphic strokes that produced a sketch-like effect, these artists created work that were to have an influence lasting well into the 20th century. The subjects of the eccentrics were the traditional four noble ones and the three friends of winter, but they also developed themes new to literary paintings such as spirits and personal and narrative landscapes, themes that permitted greater self-expression and the use of free and dynamic brushwork. In principle, then, the eccentrics did not break totally with tradition, but actually lived the ideal of the literary painters and especially those of the Yuan era. They differed in technique. Wang Yuan Qi, one of the orthodox painters, criticized them for not using brush and ink correctly, a charge that amounted to total condemnation. If examined closely, the wash of eccentrics shows marked differences in expressiveness and in degree of abstraction. To conclude, one can say that a good part of the later history of Chinese painting testifies that withdrawal from nature as a direct source for content of an art need not mean the death of that art.